our workshop. Character. I know, I'll use the stool for this and something else. Oh. <laughs> It'll work for both. Everybody, we have one of these. Who's more in the back? Right. Hello, everyone. Okay. We're all back together. I want to, first of all, have a big, big thank you for Kathy and Tony for a wonderful lunch. Thank you so much. It was perfect and delicious. We love it. So, and now we're going to have again Reverend Alice. Yay! Yay! Thank you. So, um, I know we've been in the sanctuary all morning. I'm not turned on. Well, <laughs> no, sorry about that. Turn turn on. On. <laughs> not good, <there>, David. <laughs> Don't get him started. <laughs> um, he's a funny guy. All right. I know we've been in the sanctuary all day, right? All morning and all day. And we already prayed a lot, but we're going to pray again. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Okay, great. So let's start off with a prayer. I just invite you to close your eyes or lower your gaze. Taking a deep breath and presencing yourself. Knowing that we have come together to be that place where spirit shows up is this workshop. So I know that all the material that we share, all the uh, things that we talk about, the exercises, all of this comes into divine alignment with what we have called forth here and now. And I know that each one is served in an individuated way as well as a collective way. So I give great thanks for the willingness to be here today, to be open, to be willing, to allow ourselves to reveal more of who we have come here to be. So I give great thanks for this, knowing it is done. And together we say, and, and, so, it is. Is. and so it is. Well, welcome everybody. I. Um, I'm, uh, let's see if I can get my clicker to work. How about that? The, uh, do I point to the projector, which is there? No. Nope. In, in the back. So let's see if I get some pictures up. It's red. Do I have to turn something on? Okay, so I just should do that, right? Yes, I got to turn it on back there. There you go. Okay, let's back. Let's, let's do the slideshow. That's hard to see. There we go. Remembering who you've come here to be. Um, so this afternoon, I thought we would uh, look at and do some self-reflection. Um, but I, I want to start by telling a little bit of a story. Um, and it's the story of Arjuna. And it's the story of the Bhagavad Gita and the allegory. That's a long story, and I'm going to tell a snippet of it today. And I want to tell just a little bit about how Arjuna's story starts in that allegory. Um, Arjuna was trained as a warrior to support and to defend his community. And he was called to battle, and they gave him a chariot rider. This is the, for those of you who are real Gita aficionados, this is the Alicized version of the beginning of that story. So they were called to battle and he was given a chariot rider and Arjuna was a, um, actually a archer. And, uh, and as he um, was getting ready to protect the kingdom that was uh, being threatened by invaders, he uh, was leading, the, the, he did not know that his chariot rider was actually Krishna in disguise. And in the, in the Gita, Krishna is that 
that source, it's God. And so he didn't know that, that his chariot driver was Krishna in the skies. And so they were going to battle and uh, Arjuna was ready to do his duty, to protect his kingdom, to, to take care of the land that he was trained to do. He was an amazing warrior and they rode up to the battlefield and he looked across the battlefield and he saw his uncles and his kin and his friends on the other side of the battlefield who he was supposed to fight with, who he was supposed to do harm to. And as he looked across the battlefield and prepared to fight, he, he realized he could not. He fell to the ground of his chariot and he said, I cannot do this. I cannot fight my kin. I, 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 I cannot do my duty. And he had this quandary about what was his to do. What was it that he was supposed to do after all this training? And the, he, he were the people who were threatening his well-being. And yet they were his kin. And I share that little snippet of Arjuna's story because it demonstrates for us that when we come up to those places, I want to bet it sounds just a, a little bit familiar <laughs> to you when you think about what happened in our world with the political divisiveness and the, the, the places where people have been taking sides. And you may have found yourself in a conversation with somebody you really care about. And then they begin to tell you these things that are important to them and you can't co-sign it. You can't, you can't agree with it. And yet you love this, these people. And so what are we to do? And Arjuna's problem was that he was absolutely trained and dedicated to do this task and his heart his heart knew that he could not bring harm or, or, or go to battle with, with his kin. And so when we find ourselves in a situation where we are in disagreement with someone else who we care about, I don't know about you, but I can often be at a, a bit of a loss. I don't, I don't want, I, I love, this person. I don't want them to not be in my life, but they're saying things that I can't possibly agree with. They're doing things that I, I can't support. And so one of the things that happens for us is that we begin to get confused about our viewpoints versus our values. And when we get stuck on our viewpoints, we're operating at a higher level and it is the values that are gonna give us the clarity to know what to do and how to move forward. And it's the values that will show us where we can work together. It is the, the values that we have that actually are more potent than the viewpoints. I hope you can see this, it's a, it's a little mean. We've got two people standing over, one thinks it's a six, the other says it's a nine. They're both disagreeing with each other. Um, just because you're right doesn't mean I'm wrong. You just haven't seen life from my side. And so when we come to that place in our life where we are called to be in relationship when we're called to be working with people that we don't necessarily agree with. If we're, if we are only operating at that level of viewpoints, we're not seeing the whole picture. We're just seeing what we, what we're, our view. We're only seeing. So, so I guess I might want, you might want a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about just to illustrate that. So if I have a, of a, a viewpoint and and I'm going to tread lightly here, but if I have a, a viewpoint, we have talked about inclusion earlier, and if I have a viewpoint that I really want to see more people of color in the place that I work, and then I might have a friend who has a viewpoint who thinks that it's unfair to bring people into the workplace just because of the color of their skin. Anybody had that kind of dialogue? 
Yeah, yeah. Their viewpoints. But what we need to do when we find ourselves in this situation is to be able to find the common ground of our values. What are the values that we share? And in that experience, in that example, um, I have um, a value that I uh, really want to create opportunity for someone. And the person who's, let's say that's the six view and the nine view, the other side of the view is that that person wants to see lots of opportunity in the workplace, right? We have a similar value here, but we have a different viewpoint about how that value, those values can be realized. And I, and I bring this up in this workshop and in, in this context of um, remembering who you've come here to be, because it's the values that will lead you. It's the values that will allow you to be authentic and to be able to be in relationship even when you don't agree with people, to allow you to meet somebody on common ground and realize that it's it's the viewpoint isn't the thing isn't the place that you need to argue about but it is the things that you both care about and i think it's important for us to um to stick to our values and to really understand what they are and to be clear about them um this is one of my favorite quotes from the gospel of thomas and it says, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And so what happens a lot of the time when we find ourselves having different viewpoints is that we stifle ourselves. We walk away from the relationship. We end up not doing things that we thought we were going to do because, because of our fear of conflict or our fear of disagreeing. And the world needs our authentic expression. And so our work, and it's, it's like you're not going to walk, probably not going to walk out of this workshop with like the solution. But I'm hoping that when we leave here today, you'll have a cue card, something that you can work from so that when you find yourself in these difficult situations of disagreement, that you can drop down into your values and then choose to, to work from that value as opposed to from the viewpoint. And, and a very tangible um, example, I can tell you what, I have a very solid value and purpose in my life that I'm here to reveal love. And because that is a high value for me, when I am in a situation that has a lot of moving parts and challenges on the surface, because I know that my value is to reveal love and that that's really important to me, I can, I can you know, you know, I'm, I, I, I might have not said this earlier, but I've said it to a lot of people, I'm very human. I make a lot of mistakes. I've got an ego, I've got a couple of opinions. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I put my foot in my mouth sometimes and, and I find myself in situations that um, can sometimes be difficult to navigate but if I can pause long enough to remember that I have this value about revealing love then it allows me to drop down into my you know in wisdom higher wisdom self and to recall this value and then I have access to maybe a, a different idea or a different situation. It allows me to operate from the spiritual self, the divine self, as opposed to the human self. Because the human self, as you recall, I think if you were here for my talk this morning, the human side of us keeps forgetting that we are divine and keeps thinking we're separate, keeps thinking that we're in competition of some kind. It's the divine self that is going to lead us to the behavior or the right action that once grounded in our value moves us forward. And so as we, as we move forth today with this exercise, 
my hope is that you'll get a little clearer about the values that are important to you and that you can, once you identify them, you can keep them front and center for those times when you too will fall asleep. You too will forget. You too will start to get into that argument with somebody about something. No, it's a six. No, it's a nine. You're wrong. And our val and it's, it is the values that are going to bring us back to center and remind us who we have, who we have come here to be. So this is a, a simple uh, little exercise. I, uh, there's one other thing I want to share with you. Um, I think that sometimes we can get um, lost in our uh, need to be right or our you know things that we're really passionate about. And so when we find ourselves in these situations where we are at odds with someone about a position or a stance, I want to invite you to inquire within yourself, am I holding this idea out of obligation or is this what I really believe in my heart? Because if you're like me, you know, I grew up in a family that had a certain political persuasion. And so, of course, that's how I was going to, you know, that's how I was going to vote because that's how, that's how my family voted. And I was brought up with ideals that were given to me by the environment that I, that I, and the town and the, and the teachers and the authority figures that were in my life. I was, I just, some of these things I just accepted wholesale. And so as we walk, begin to walk out this uh, thing called life and, and, and it's getting more complex. Life is because as we evolve, evolution creates more complexity. So the world's getting more complex and it's requiring us to be more self-reflective and it's requiring us to be more introspective and it's requiring us to remember who we've come here to be. Any questions before we start the exercise? Any comments because it might have brought some stuff up for you. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yes. Our I was talking to Debbie today. Uh, wait. 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 Hi. I was talking to Debbie uh, over there today about uh, my experience um, last week, and it's about my perception. So I joined a new business networking club. It's always been on Zoom. I only know these people on the face that I see. So there's a plumber in the group. I know him as a plumber. Okay. He calls me the other day and says, hey, our fans, I'm just reaching out. Welcome to the club. And I just wanted to know that I'm a photographer too. And I like this and this in your photos on your website. So I was very excited. And then, then he starts talking about himself. Well, this plumber is my perception of a plumber, is this really famous photographer that exhibits at the pageant of the masters. I know his work. I told him that. And I was just blown away because my perception was changed by the reality. Yeah. Right. So. Right. Great. Uh, so that's all. Great insight. A great insight. We, um, <clears throat> anybody else besides me in the room that makes stuff up? <laughs> oh, you, uh, Mary, do you have a question, or, no, or are you just sorry. joining the Make Stuff Up Club? Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, right. I, um, I like to say I have an MSU because <laughs> I make stuff up. We we get a, like a little snippet of information, and then our mind. You know, I don't know about you, my mind likes to fill in the gaps really quickly. Like, I, I, I can't handle the space for some reason. And so I have to make up a whole bunch of stuff about this little tiny piece of thing that I've seen in somebody's life. And so this inquiry that we can make when we read, self-inquiry is really important because it, 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 it helps us to not get too far down the road with the stuff we make up. And then we can start to ask questions I'm, um, I'm in relationship with a guy that is the king of questions, <laughs> king of questions. And he's taught me a lot about looking beneath the surface, 
you know, not taking things on face value, trying to have a better understanding of the situation. And in this time in our uh, country, in our society, where everybody's opinion is online, right? <laughs> Just go on one of the social media places and it's really easy to spout that stuff off. So, it's, and, and we can get little snippets and start making up stories that, um, and get really, put a poor lot of energy into it and it's not necessary because we need to ask questions. Speaking of which, any other comments, insights, or questions before we? Come on, people. <laughs> no worries. Um, so I want to take you through a little practice. And if, um, if there are people who are um, watching from home, we're going to start looking at um, values. But we're going to get access it through a little bit of a different avenue. I'm going to actually ask you to do some projection <laughs> on purpose. And so the, the, the practice is to begin to explore the things that are important to us, but not just from this laundry list of values, but um, which you should have a copy of, give you, an, and this is by no means an extensive list of values. Um, but to, to begin to look at the things that are important to us and begin to have um, a sense of, of what, are, what the most important and prioritize our values. And if you're at home and you don't have a worksheet, I want to invite you to just get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you can just uh, make some columns on your paper. Uh, the columns you want to make... You're going to make four columns and seven rows on your paper and have room at the bottom later. And this is a simple exercise where we're going to do some inner reflection and then we're going to see what comes up. And so um, while there are instructions on your paper, I want to encourage you not to, to go ahead and fill this out from your thinking left brain. I want to engage our higher wisdom self. So if I can ask you to put your pens down for a minute and to close your eyes. Because it's tempting to just fill out the paper, isn't it? To close your eyes and to take a deep breath. And create some presence and stillness as you ask yourself some questions. Moving into that interior space, inviting the higher wisdom self to guide you and to inform you and to scroll you back in time. To look at the experiences that you've had, perhaps as a as a small child or as a young adult or even as recently as last week, but to begin to, to bring forward for you those people that have either been real or fictional, alive or dead, who you admire most. And this is an, an opportunity for us to really drop down into our hearts and to think about those people in the world, in our immediate circles, fictional characters even, world leaders, spiritual badasses. Who are those people that you admire most? And as those names come forward, I invite you to write them down on the piece of paper that you've been provided with. And to, to really just, whatever comes up for you is right. You shouldn't have to struggle for this. Just allow those names to come forward. It might be Mother Teresa. It might be an activist. It might be a world leader. Could be one of the Marvel, Captain America, Wonder Woman. Because even the fictional characters have a persona that's created around them that attracts us. So you're looking for that attraction.
this person sitting next to you. Grandparents, your children. If you're having trouble at all coming up with any names, this is the time to close your eyes and ask your heart. Because it's your higher wisdom self that wants to bring these names forward to you. Just taking a deep breath and allowing this to come forth for you again. Because something in your nose. And if you've got your um, names on the list, I now want you to think about the the values, the attributes, or the qualities that you admire about these folks. What is it that attracted you to them? Those of you that might be watching on Zoom, there's a list of values on the screen that you can look at. And for those of you here, if you need a little list of possible attributes and qualities, you can look at that list and see what's coming up for you. And I'm going to invite you to try to come up with at least three qualities or attributes for each name. And for those of you at home, that's why you have four columns on your sheet.
And as you um, begin to assemble your attributes and qualities at the top of your sheet, there's another section in the middle of your sheet where I'm inviting you to look for patterns in the qualities and attributes that you assign to the people that you admire and begin to circle those patterns that come up for you. And look for the, the themes and then see if you can boil down those attributes and qualities to some central themes in your sheet. For those of you at home, we're just making seven little lines. Placing, you don't need to have seven, three is plenty, whatever themes come up for you. Hmm. Nothing. In the, none of the attributes have anything in common with them, each other. In other words, can you put them in? This is the way I've come here to be. I can't. Sorry. Is this where we put it? This yes. is where I've come here to be. And we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. We're looking for themes as we look at these. So the, this is this is a useful form of projection because there are people in the world or people in our lives that we really admire. We begin to look at the, at the attributes and the qualities that they hold, and then we begin to look for the patterns. I I found patterns of love and joy and compassion in the people that I admired most, and so it helped me to begin to boil down those values that were important to me and so that's the purpose and if um you know if you're if you're struggling to find a pattern this is the time to go within and to ask your higher wisdom self and to get quiet just to get quiet to just follow your breath and trust what comes up a lot of times we approach some of these exercises like it's some kind of problem we have to solve when it's really just wisdom that's looking to be discovered. And when you have those patterns, I guess, so let me check in. Does anybody need more time with this part of the exercise? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. All right. This is where I wish I had a little music in the background to support you. <laughs> that doesn't, that usually doesn't inspire calm and reflection. Let's <coughs> breathe into it. And if you're not needing more time, I invite you to just hold the space for the rest of us. We're going to do a little sharing so anybody who might need some more insight might get it when we, when we get to that part of the practice. 
I'm going to um, invite us to pair up and finish. If, you, if you're still working on the worksheet, you can finish it with a partner. And um, if you're finished, you're probably ready for this part of the exercise. So I'm going to ask you to get in groups of two. We might require that you get up and move around a little bit. <laughs> Everybody have a partner? Oh, the Texas contingent's in the back. <laughs> and for, um, and, and so what I'm going to, before you get started, what I'm going to invite you to do is to share your experience so far about the names that have come up for you and to begin to talk about the attributes that were, that you saw that resonated with you for these people. And then to, if you can't see the pattern, maybe your partner can. And, um, and to see if you can hone down those uh, seven attributes to qualities that can complete the sentence, I have come here to be a blank expression of God. So if my, um, if my, one of my qualities was honesty, then I have come here to be an honest expression of God. You might have to change the words a little bit, but you're gonna to wanna to be able to complete that sentence with yeah. all the qualities you bring forth. So go ahead and work together first. Yes. I get a list of the following values. They're, uh, <laughs> you're getting confused with, some of them are some of them are to help, help, you know, get your mind moving and your heart moving at the time. And they can be interchangeable because what you're really looking for is who you come to be. Ladies, do you want to go into uh, breakout rooms and work in pairs? Uh, not necessarily for me. I, this is just, thank you. Thank you for sending these handouts. It's great. I couldn't figure out how to get back in out of the little. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, Roxanne, I guess not. I'm, I'm fine. I think. Okay. Thank you. Though. All right. All right. Never mind. Thanks Pam for all you're doing. Video <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 
and qualities you should have identified some patterns and then brought those patterns down to the middle section and then begun to language them in the I came here to be a blank expression of God in those for those qualities so you should be moving down the worksheet so we'll take a couple more minutes and, and sharing and filling out the worksheet can you let the kind of thing you tell us? Let's come, let's start to, um, you need more time? Who needs more time to, to, with their worksheet? Because I want to have some, a little bit of group sharing as well. So does anybody, I'll give you two options. You can, you can share about the process a little bit. 
his comments, things that come, insights that might have come up for you, or maybe you want to stand up in front of everybody and you want to claim that expression that you have come here to be. Either one. All right. Where's your mic? Oh. I have come here to be a loving, wise, compassionate, and heart-centered expression of God. Yay! Yay! Woo! And so what we can say is, I know, I see that in you. I see, I see, I see that, that in you. you. Thank you. I have come here to be loving, kind, authentic, innovative, adventurous, and just to serve God. Yeah, we see that in you. Here. Oh. I came here to be an intelligent, wise, loving, authentic, passionate, courageous, and compassionate expression of God. We yes. see that yes. in you. Yes. You can, you don't, I'll you, do you can share about the, the process. Maybe you had some surprises. No surprises here. No. <laughs> Say more about that. Oh, oh okay. Well, my, my people were my daughters. And my mom and Dr. Heather and Karen and uh, Dr. Holmes and there was a, a, and all it, and um, <clears throat> Rose said, "Well, I can see. Well, I, I, my daughter's I can see is powerful and ambitious and had drive and and honest and authentic and yeah. So um, and Karen, <laughs> so I have come here to be truthful, loving, wise." powerful, supportive, and friendly expression of God. <laughs> we see that in you. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, when, go ahead. Okay. So um, I didn't see patterns. I just, people surprised me who came up that I haven't thought about in years. <laughs> I was like, what are they doing in my life? <laughs> so uh, I added the word more. I've come here to be more there we go. loving, wealthy, compassionate, generous, and authentic. We see that in you. Amen. I have come here to be a loving, creative, joyous, a bright light, powerful and courageous expression of spirit. We see that in you. Thank you. Who's next? Cheryl. There's there's quite there's quite a lot of power in having people witness you when you claim your good like this. I'm like you. I put my kids and my mom. You know that's because my kids are what they are because of me. <laughs> um, I have come here to be a loving mother, smart, caring of others, servant of God, a patriot, because I love my country and what's going on right now is, anyway, something else. Generous and nice. <laughs> we see that in you. I came here to be trustworthy, ethical, compassionate, persistent, and authentic expression of God. We see that in you. I have come here to be compassionate, authentic, community-oriented, loving, determined, and creative, and an expression of God. We see that in you. Oh, I'm so glad you're all piping up. I'm loving hearing what who you've come here to be. It was an interesting process. I saw a lot of fairness, you know, and justness and um, courage. So 
I came here to be a loving, generous, wise, compassionate, joyful, powerful expression of God. We yes. see that in you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Rose, if you wait long enough. Yes. <laughs> Okay. My people were Dr. Heather, Gandhi, Joaquin Phoenix, our own Bruce Friedenberg, and Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. I have come here to be a powerful, persistent expression of God as justice and peace. We, we see, see that, that in you. you. That's good. That's good. So I, I uh, good. awesome. It's interesting how many of us picked our children and our mother. <laughs> and I have to ditto that. What a beautiful expression we are. And I've come here to be strong, wise, open, and a real expression of God. We, we see, see that, that in you. you. Huh. Over here. Hello. I've come here to be a loving, independent, courageous, truthful, compassionate, creative, joyous expression of God. Oh, we see that in you. Okay. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. I have come. Oh, do I name the people? My mother, Gandhi, Jesus, MLK Jr. My father, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Dalai Lama. Oh, Ooh, great group. <laughs> I have dinner every night. Um, <laughs> I'll be over tonight. <laughs> I have come here to be a loving, passionate, strong, hardworking, courageous, active expression of God. We see that in you. I just wanted to say. Yeah, we'll get one more. We'll get a double wanted, dip here. I don't. Out. Well, we I think we have some people watching from home. So oh, oh. I just wanted to say my grandmother came up and everything on this list, practically. <laughs> she helped to raise me though, so maybe that took a little. I don't know. But she was just a fantastic woman from Germany. And so she would live there during the war, I guess the first world war and everything. Very tough for her, but she was. She lived with us. Oh, I dropped my mom. She lived with us. Yeah. I, Marlene, have come here to be a loving, strong, giving, joyful, compassionate and caring expression of God. We see that in you. Well, I want to... One more. Okay. I'm... <laughs> Don't be sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. So here's my people. Mary Brogdon. Yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah. My father-in-law, who's the most Christ-like person I've met on this planet. Martin Luther King, my mother, Diane King Van, and my kids. And I have come here to be an authentic, patient, loving, generous, courageous creation and creative expression of divine spirit. We see that in you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anybody else want to name it and claim it? Well, here's my invitation to you. If you didn't want to stand up and claim it right now, do it with a friend. Do it with a trusted advisor, somebody that you can, because there's power in our words. And so if you can speak it aloud into the room, it's going to take on a vibratory 
quality and it will help you to own this. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to be able to really own these qualities. There's a little saying that I love and it often has a negative connotation, but it means the same thing with positive uh, attributes. You spot it, you got it. And sometimes we think that we hear that in the, in the terms, especially in the recovery rooms that we're talking about character defects or things that we don't like, but you could not recognize these attributes if they did not live in you already. And so I'm gonna encourage you to keep this someplace close by to remind yourself of who you've come here to be and to remind yourself of the, the places you wanna live from. And that these are the qualities and attributes that you have charged yourself with walking out into the world during these complex times we live in. And they will help to ground you in something bigger than our viewpoints. If we looked at Arjuna's story, where he starts out absolutely unclear, indecisive, can't believe he has found himself in a situation where he might have to fight with his family. What we know is that if you fast forward to the end of the Gita, you have Krishna and Arjuna having these conversations about his true and authentic self. He learns that the situation that he's in is just a temporary situation. It's just a, something that's happened so that he can wake up to the greater good that lives within him and all. And Krishna shows himself and he begins to see that the world is so much more than the, just the material experiences, experiences that he's having. And so my invitation to you as you, as we leave here today is to take these qualities and help them to help, allow you to rise above those things that are happening in the world and to remember who you've come here to be and who you've come here to to uh, walk out as in this world of ours that really needs you to be authentic. It needs you to operate from your cue card, if you will. So I wanna thank you very much for joining me for this. It's been a pleasure to be with you today and I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.